Arsenal, one of the most formative teams during my years watching football. You know, you've got the likes of the Invincibles, the style of football that they play. They attracted a lot of support just down to that. Now, in the past few years before Arsene Wenger left the club, they did start to fall on harder times. They then recruited Unai Emery after Wenger left and he didn't really be a success. And whilst Mikel Arteta has come in and if you talk to Arsenal fans, they will see he definitely has improved the brand of football, the results haven't exactly followed so we are going to do a short series on football manager 2020 to see if we can improve arsenal in this very first season now if you've ever done a save with arsenal on football manager 2020 you know they don't start with the most amount of money they spent it all on nicolas pepe in the summer so we've only got a budget of around 18 million pounds and around 200k available in the wages this has been adjusted i think you originally start with 10 million in the transfer and 350k in the wages so we can fiddle with it a little bit depending on what sort of player we want to sign now in terms of the squad of arsenal in, in football manager terms they should be at least challenging at the top of the table they've got a very very talented goalkeeper in leno he is great on football manager there is no need to go and replace or improve him uh, their defense is maybe a little bit suspect in the def uh, central defender area we've got two very older players but if you look at the attributes, they're absolutely great. Socrates in particular is such a good uh, centre-half. And David Luiz there alongside him. Maybe if we can uh, build up enough funds, it might be an area where I look to improve during the summer. At uh, right back, we've got Hector Bellerin. We've got Callum Chambers as backup, and Bellerin's obviously injured to begin with. So we might have to look at improving the strength and depth of him. Uh, left back, we're absolutely fine with. Kolasinac and Kieran Tierney should see uh, us through the rest of the season. At central midfield, we've got the likes of Lucas Torreira, Matteo Guendouzi, Granit Xhaka, who I am going to be looking to move on to raise funds to improve in other areas. Whilst he is a very talented player, I'm more than happy to see him leave the club. Uh, Nicholas Pepe on that right-hand side will be a nailed-on starter. Mesut Ozil in behind the strikers. Again, not really doing it in real life, but on football manager at the very least, he is fantastic. So we need to make the most of out of him and make sure he gives us the best performances to see us through to hopefully challenge for the title this season. Aubameyang and Lacazette is the usual conundrum. We're not playing two strikers, we're only playing one. I would rather play Aubameyang, but I can't bench Lacazette. So Lacazette starts up top, Aubameyang on the left, and this will be the sort of tactic we look at going forward for the rest of the season. This will likely massively evolve compared to when you see it next. But I think this is the sort of style and system we're going to be playing. It is a custom Jujan press, but it has been stripped back so there's very few team instructions and there's very few player instructions either that is something that will develop over the course of the, the season whilst the games are being played so it's the 24th of june 2019 i have the summer transfer window to go through i'll see you at the first game so the summer transfer window has been completed and we are at the first game of the season against crystal palace in the premier league so the transfer window was a little bit more quiet than i anticipated nobody really came in for many of our players so nobody really left Granit Xhaka ended up leaving to Manchester United for £35.5 million. We loaned out Bukayo Saka to Nottingham Forest for £250,000 per month. Um, and that was pretty much it on the outs. In terms of the incomings, I think we've definitely improved our strength and depth. We signed Kevin Malqui from Napoli, who was transfer listed for around £9 million. He will probably be our starting right back until Hector Bellerin can get back fit. And then we also signed Thomas Partey for £14.5 million from Atletico Madrid, who was also transfer listed. He is going to be my Granit Xhaka replacement. He will play probably back up to Guendouzi and Lucas Torreira in both positions. But I think that's definitely an improvement in terms of the amount of depth we've got in the squad and our ability to be able to survive an injury crisis, which is likely to happen. So the tactic. <laughs> I'm trying to solve the conundrum of Lacazette and Aubameyang, trying to get the, boss, the best out of both. And this, this abomination is sort of what has come out of that. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. This is very likely to change. I do have an alternate tactic here. Uh, we, we we can drop our fullbacks back if it's causing us too many problems in the defence. But I want to play it in an Arsenal kind of way. I really want to attack teams. I often think the best way, uh, the best form of defence on Football Manager is to go fully attacking. Um, so we're going to go for that and see how our boys handle it. For the first game against uh, Crystal Palace, we do still have a number of injuries that we start the game with. Tierney's still out, Bellerin's still out, Rob Holden and Emile Smith-Rowe. 
But in terms of the starting lineup, things are looking pretty comfortable. Leno starts in goal. Malqui starts our right back with uh, Socrates and David Luiz as our centre backs. I did try and go for Alessio Romagnoli and um, Ruben Diaz. Both too expensive with our £17 million remaining in the transfer budget. And it might be something we have to really look at in the January transfer window if we can convince our board to give us some more money. Uh, so that's our defence. Torreira in at defensive midfield with Kalasnash playing in the attack and left wing back spot. Nicholas Pepe plays at right wing. Matteo Guendouzi in the centre. Mesut Ozil in behind Aubameyang with Lacazette sitting to the side, being the deep line forward, hopefully filling in that gap that is left by the vacant left winger. And I'm hoping that this might work. Aubameyang did have some interest from Real Madrid, as did Alexandre Lacazette, but they never came in with a concrete offer, so they ended up staying at the club. I was interested, actually, in selling um, Alexandre Lacazette, and if we could have got 70 or £80 million, pounds, I think we could have done some major reforming of this squad. But we were left with what we're left with. We'll have to see how it goes. Crystal Palace, first game of the series at home. Let's see how we do. So Crystal Palace come on with a pretty defensive formation, a cautious 4 5 1, 5 in the middle. Um, we'll have to see if we can break them down. Obviously, we're going very attacking. Uh, you would imagine that we will be able to create some space. They haven't got the five centre backs. They've got Gary Cahill in at centre back, who still decent, but not the paciest of centre backs these days. So we'll see how we get on. Let's get the kick off. So just talking a little bit more about the save in general and how it's going to go. I anticipate only really doing one season with Arsenal. I just want to see in this first season how good we can get with Arsenal. We were only expected to qualify for the Europa League as we go 1-0 up pretty early on here. One minute in, Aubameyang getting the goal from a Nicolas Pepe assist. Who actually took the corner though? I don't think it was Pepe. Who was it? It was Mesut Ozil takes the corner. Pepe gets his head on it. And Aubameyang buries it at the back post. But yeah, I don't anticipate going any further than one season. Um, this might be around 10 episodes or so to get through the entirety of the season. Trying to qualify for the Champions League at the very least, but hopefully challenging for the Premier League title. That is very difficult on Football Manager in the first season because Liverpool and Manchester City are both pretty unreal on this game. So it will take some really, really good form and probably some luck to be able to do it. But... You never know, we might be able to do it. As there is another highlight, and Aubameyang nips past the defender. He's in one-on-one, -on -one, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has proven that we need to start him up top. His second goal already of the game, four minutes in. He does incredibly well to close down Sacco on the ball, who dilly-dallies on it a bit too much. And one-on-ones, maybe we might score some in this season. Um, the update is officially out for Football Manager, if you didn't know. And one-on-ones have been improved according to the patch notes. And maybe that was evidence of it. 30 minutes in now and there is another highlight. It's Crystal Palace coming down the right-hand side this time with Andros Townsend. But we get back and defend well. And Lacazette sets away Aubameyang. Can he get his hat-trick already? He probably should have, to be honest with you. Another highlight straight away. And it's Lacazette this time coming down the left-hand side. Easy save for the Crystal Palace goalkeeper. A pretty confident first half. 2-0 up inside five minutes. And that's how the first half has ended. Hoping for a little bit more in the second, maybe get a couple of more goals. But um, very, very pleased with the tactics performing. You know, uh, Crystal Palace haven't been able to exploit our lack of defensive um, cover that we've got, particularly on the left-hand side. So we'll have to keep an eye on Andros Towns and see how he plays. But at the minute, he's not doing very well. It's taken to the 70th minute to get our first highlight of the second half. It's Palace, who are in an advanced position with McCarthy. He plays back to Ward on this right hand side we're closing them down really really well but that does leave gaps when you do it can they exploit it Gary Cahill gives the ball away and it's going to be another quick attack by us Mesut a lovely through ball for Aubameyang one-on-ones this time the goalkeeper is equal to Aubameyang's challenge and he couldn't get his hat trick. Mesut Ozil with the corner we've already scored from one doesn't look like we're going to score from this one so with 15 minutes or so to go, Kalasnach will have to stay on the pitch. We'll get Reese Nelson on for Nicholas Pepe on that right-hand side. Mesut Ozil can come off for Danny Sabellos. And we'll also get Thomas Partey on for Matteo Guendouzi in the centre. All three changes made. Let's see if we can see out the rest of this game. Danny Sabellos coming forward in the 75th minute. Thomas Partey out of Malqui on this right-hand side. He's got good attacking chops and he goes for goal. Even though I specifically told him to shoot less often, but he doesn't listen to me. A decent, strong, promising performance in our first game. There is a final highlight of the game. Um, this might end up leading to nothing. But I'm happy with the result and how we've played. Hopefully, as the season progresses and they get used to the tactic and the formation more, we might see utter domination against teams like Crystal Palace um, with lots of goals scored. But 
you know, what we've seen today, it's been quite uh, good to see. Danny Sabellos on the edge of the box here. Plays about to Lucas Torreira. Space on the right-hand side for Malqui, and he finds him. Can he get the ball in? Is that going to be a penalty? It's going to go to VAR. It probably is a penalty, and it's been given. How well, Bamiyang. Hatrick, first game. You've had a number of opportunities to get it. Can you do it in the 93rd minute? He steps up. And whenever you're ready, mate, we've all got all the time in the world. And now we are Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with his third goal of the game, making a 3-0. And that just rounds out a pretty convincing victory. And there it is, full-time, utter domination by the match stats. A fantastic first game in charge. It's a game we are expected to win at home against Crystal Palace, so we can't get too carried away. But it's them sort of games where we need to be consistent and reliable because... Arsenal in real life, they've drew against a number of teams who they should not be drawing against. And it's the kind of game where they might have dropped points in in real life. So, we've definitely done a number there. So, after them, runner fixtures, we do sit top of the table. Uh, level on points with a number of teams. Spurs winning 3-0 in their game as well. But, uh, happy days. Let's have a look to see where we're going to come back for. It'll probably be the first game in the Europa League and the game against Manchester City in the Premier League. So, I will see you there. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.